Latanya, did you know that once reconciliation begins, there's a process for the healing? Did you know that once healing takes place, the reconciled relationship can be awesome? That is so good and that is so true. And listen guys, on today is the second part of Latanya and her dad's story of reconciliation and healing that has taken place uh, with God. Stay tuned and we'll be back with you shortly. Welcome back to In The Know. And on today, we have the second part of uh, the story of reconciliation with my co-host, Latanya, and her dad. Uh, thank you for being back with us again. Thank you once again for being You're back so here. You're so welcome, sir. And we appreciate you once again for uh, taking time out of your schedule, out of your life, to fly all the way from Hamilton, Ohio, uh, to be with us. Uh, and as we started already talking, we began the story, and uh, we talked about from birth until um, 1994 when the reconciliation actually took place then. Uh, one of the things we talked about was uh, you having identity issues, making your own little family out of the book and <laughs> yeah. you self-medicating and having try to ignore the problem away. And one thing you said that uh, even though you self-medicate, it doesn't change the issue. The issue is still there. Sure, still um, there. And, but Christ came into your life around 89, I think it was you said? Yes. 1989? Yes, yes, yes. And that's when you had to begin to start dealing with the issues. Um, and along those lines, there was something you said in between shows that uh, is sticking with me right now um, when you said that God had to prepare her heart for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that, that's really sticking with me at this mm -hmm. very moment. But um, let's go, because you mentioned in the earlier broadcast, the earlier show, that there was a phone call that you received at your sister's house. Um, and when you received that phone call, what kind of emotions, uh, and when you heard the voice, what, kind, what happened to you then? It was, it was surreal. Mm. You know, after all those years, mm -hmm. to have my adult daughter on the other end of the line, it was just, you know, a, a thousand things ran through my mind. You know, will she say hi, Daddy? Will she will she address me as Daddy? Will she, you know, address me in some other way? You know, will she? Will I sense love in her voice or bitterness, or things of that? I don't remember exactly what she said, but um, however the conversation went at that time led to her coming to Ohio. Is okay, this now, now let's stop right there. And we're going to get into all of that. For you, how hard was it? And, or what What was the process for you to get to that point to make the phone call? So I'd always been looking, mm -hmm. as we discussed That's before right. on the other previous broadcast. So I always was looking. And so my mom, only thing she could give me was you know, as he as he mentioned on the earlier broadcast, was that their their childhood friends or their teenage friends had uh, were married, and he, she said, "Well, they're married. Look them up." And again, this is pre social media, so I'm calling, you know, the director, the operator, going through that, and I, they I, they were actually married. I found them. Um, I called, and so Nita's going. I haven't seen your dad since since seventies, you know. And she said, "I don't live on that side of town anymore. I don't know." Any family members, if I even saw them, I wouldn't know them. It's been so long. And she said, I don't, I don't even know how to help you. And so at that point, actually, when I called Nita, that was, that was it. I made up my mind. This was my last. I'm done. Wow. And I really, I, I literally said, God, if, if this doesn't work, then I'm going to have to settle myself that I'm never going to meet him. And I was, I really settled myself. Wow. And so I made the call. And this was in, uh, early in that, in that year. And so I made the call and she said, well, give me your number. In my mind, I said, she wrote it on a bill. She's going to throw it away. Mm -hmm. It's like six months later or something like that. And so I said, you know what? She probably wrote it on a bill. She threw it away. And then she calls 
And so when she called and she goes, this is Nita, I started screaming because she had not called. Mm -hmm. There's all this time had gone by and she hadn't called. So when she said, this is Nita, I just started screaming and like, like she's like, calm down. <laughs> He's there. I was like, wait a minute, hold on. Ah! So, uh, so he gets on the phone. And so that's what led up to that point. But years of like, you know, stalking people, like I said in the, <laughs> in the, in the previous broadcast, like, oh, Smith, hey, you, you know, so years of stalking people and, um, and just making that, making that effort. And like I said earlier, I wrote a letter and that didn't, I didn't get a hit from that. And so finally there's the call. And, but I settled with myself that mm. that was going to be my last my actual effort. And so at the time, my husband was in the field. He had been in the field for a couple of weeks. And it was like 3 o'clock in the morning when he came home. We had not talked. And I met him at the top of the stairs going, guess who called me? And he literally, he said, your daddy. I was like, how did you know? <laughs> and he said, your, your whole face, everything was just, he, he just mm -hmm. knew. Mm -hmm. I said, guess who? I, he's like, your dad. I was like, how in the world? He said, your face is just lit up. Mm. And so that was the phone call. And then it was, you know, where are you? Can we get together? And I'm like, no, we're going to take leave and we're going to come to Ohio. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And what kind of emotions? Oh, man, you cannot imagine. <laughs> so I didn't say daddy because I remember the conversation that we had. Yeah. I was like, I didn't say anything because I had never called anybody daddy. I called my grandparents, grandmother and grand grandmother and granddaddy, but I never even used daddy. Um, and so I remember that conversation. I was like, I'm calling you Jake. He's like, that's not going to work. <laughs> like, no, you're not. I was like, yes, I am. no, you're not. He's like, you can call me Mr. Jake or something. But, uh, but he was like, no, that's not working. But the emotions, oh my goodness, it was just crazy because one of my emotions were angry because when I finally did get to Ohio, I remember my brother going, oh, we do this every year because I long to like, what is that family like? And I get there and they're close. And so my brother's like, oh, girl, this is nothing. We've been doing this. We've and it been was new to you. And it was new to me. And I was like, I was upset because I'm like, I have been missing out on all the family gatherings. And I'm mad. I'm angry. So the emotions were, it's just like an onion. You have to start peeling back. Mm -hmm. I'm mad. I, I am bitter at this point. I'm mad. I'm angry. All these cousins. I was overwhelmed. And I remember you saying, oh, we're going to all be there. And I was like, no, don't do that to me. I was, <laughs> and it's a million of them, you know. And so and so it's, it's all the emotions. I'm angry. I'm mad. I'm frustrated. You know, um, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. Probably can't breathe. Yeah. You know, all the things we see on the Oprah reunion, you know, on the other reunions. And it's just, it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. It's totally overwhelming. And, and, and I'm pretty sure with that, um, the emotions, you know, even from a child, did that, did you begin to feel complete or a certain type of way when you finally connected with? A lot of questions were answered. A lot of mm -hmm. questions were, were hanging, but I finally, I was able to identify. Because I've mentioned before, um, you know, growing, growing up, people that asked me, was I adopted? People that didn't know, you know, my grandmother was, was definitely not tall. She was dark, you know, so just like misfit. You know, I was always referred to, oh, your little red grandmother, you know, the little red one. And so, because they're making the, the difference there, I felt that. People don't realize it, but I felt that. So finally, I get to a place that's like, oh, the girls are tall. You know, everybody's tall. So everybody's my complexion. So it's like, it yeah, so it's like, oh, finally, I'm, I, I fit. I fit in once, once and, for, you know, finally. I fit in, but it's it was it's a lot. It's emotional. Yeah, I bet it is. And, and for you, I know that had to be. Oh my goodness! It was. It was the best gift, mm -hmm. one of the best gifts that God could have ever given me, mm -hmm. to be reconciled with my oldest child. Mm -hmm. um, married, has given me two grandchildren at that time. Was it mm -hmm. just London and Jabra? Mm -hmm. And for her to meet her other siblings for the first time. And I never forget, we, we had, we, we went to a park or we something did. for- Was it for King Island or something? Some, or something. some park or something we went for a family gathering yes. and uh, I'll never forget this. She just sat on my lap <laughs> with her arm around, like a, like a young child would mm -hmm. do her dad. Mm -hmm. And she just sat in my lap with her arm around me and I'm telling you, it was like, it was just something. I mean, you know, she was, now having, I imagine, a daughter-daddy moment, yeah. you know, and she sat in my lap for almost the whole time we were there, just about, you know, just, and, and I guess there was a connect there with us touching, hugging, holding one another, and um, 
I believe that moment of great healing began to take place yeah. because of the connectivity. Yeah. And, and was forgiveness hard for you? No, so I really didn't deal with the forgiveness part. Mm -hmm. um, I think I was raised pretty much to, to forgive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the rejection part mm -hmm. that I really had to work through. And I guess, you know, I'm sure that that, that was there, but my main thing was the rejection. Um, but the forgiving, I was always, turn, I, I guess circumstances were taking place um, unbeknownst to me that were, that were causing other forgiveness to take place. So I was always having to turn the other cheek. So yeah. that wasn't really hard to say, yeah, I, I want I want this person in my life. I want, you know, I want the siblings. I want everything that I don't, I didn't have, but it was the rejection piece that I had grown up with. Like, you know, where is he? Where is everyone? Um, just that, but forgiveness, uh, maybe not so hard. It was the rejection part. And, and what about for you? Was there like an accept, being like that acceptance of? That? Well, I, I wondered, you know, would she really accept me totally as her dad? Would she love me? Would she allow me to love her? Uh, now, at this point in time, I understand what my role should be in her life as a father. At this point in time, I know how to be a father because I've now, even at that age, it really started to blossom into true manhood. Yeah. And, and, and again, as I said earlier, um, it was all because of my life in Christ. Yeah. Uh, had I not given my life to Christ, we probably would never have come together. God probably would not have allowed this. Um, and I feel strongly about that because I would have just entered back into her life with more hurt, pain, yeah. rejection, yeah. you know. So uh, that there had to be some self-healing that had yes, to take place yes, before. Yes, 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 yes. What was, and, and please, uh, well, I'm going to ask this question because I feel like I should ask. What was the hardest question you had to answer for her? Wow, that's all <laughs> I, yeah. That's, I mean, it, because sometimes we don't want to answer the tough questions. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, and, and it, like we'll try to sweep it and, you know, because I'm the adult, I'm grown. I don't, have I don't know. Was it why? I don't know. I, I think it was. Yes, you. <laughs> I think it was. Know. You know, um, because because we. Oh my God, we just talked forever. Yeah. For the first few years, we just talked, 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 talked. Um. I, I believe it was. Why wasn't I there? Mm -hmm. Why did I leave? Mm -hmm. You know, and those. Those were the questions, really, I didn't want to have to deal with. The hard ones. Those were the hard ones. Those yeah. were the, because they cut right to the heart. Yeah. And um, because I had no legitimate answer. Wow. You mm. know, to give her. There was really no reason uh, other than I was just young, afraid, mm. full of hurting, pain, and rejection of my own self. And this is why I said earlier, it is so easy. If you don't deal with these things when they come up, it is so easy for those things to lie dormant within you, fester, grow into something else. Uh, uh, you become them, many of them. You know, you become uh, just a part of the things that really hurt you. You then begin to do those same things. I can see the emotions beginning to change, but um, I'm listening. <laughs> I can see the emotions. Uh, <laughs> You're tapping on stuff. Yeah, I'm yeah. I mean, but sometimes we have to deal with, mm -hmm. and 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 um, and I know there were things that were going through your mind, and even though reconciliation had begun, I know your emotions still mm -hmm. had to be going away and you dealing with all these things, and even the bitterness mm -hmm. that, like you said, and the rejection. I know there had to be a point where you wanted, look, tell me the truth. And when the truth began to come out, how did that, when he said he was, Im, you know, immature and all of these things and all of, I know there had to be something there that was like. Yes. So at the time I am saved, I received Christ in my life and I'm thinking, you know, you, you got this. Right. And so I remember um, still telling friends. Um, I had had a friend like, oh, you still crying about your dad? I was like, no, you've seen your dad every single day yeah. of your life. I've seen my grandfather. Yeah. But... Um, Except in the Lord, you know, you think, oh, you know, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. No, all those things, the enemy is just like this happened and this happened. And so now um, I'm having to actually deal with all of these emotions. Um, just again, angry. I'm angry at the fact that I have cousins. I grew up playing by myself. Mm -hmm. 
you know, um, I grew up in the in the country playing by myself, make believe friends, <laughs> preaching to my dolls, you know, and I could have had an audience, you know, mm -hmm. I have, you know, I've been preaching to dolls all my life and singing to dolls. And so I found out like, really, I could have had a choir with me. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. I'm mad. <laughs> mm -hmm. So these are the things that are going through my mind at the time because I'm, I'm having flashbacks, you know, about these things. And so it's just all the emotions. I cannot begin to tell you of, wow. of all, all of them. And it's, it's very important that you address as they come up, they need to be dealt with. Yeah. Everything needs to be dealt with. Yeah, yeah, because if not, like you said, it'll just, it'll just mm -hmm. be there. And, and eventually when you do deal with it, it's, yeah. it'll be harder to deal with because mm -hmm. it's been so long. Yes. And now you guys are at a point of you've been reconciled and you're um, speaking on a pretty much a daily basis and all of that. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's taking some time to get to that point. And um, I know that God is able to heal and God is able to restore. Mm -hmm. But I know there had to be, and, and, and we're going to you know, hear a little bit more about the other part of the story. But um, there had to be that one hump that you guys had to just deal with and face like, you know, okay, uh, tell me. And then after you, you know, tell me this, tell me that. And I know those questions get ugly. And then, you know, as a man, sometimes we could feel like, well, I messed up. I'm a failure and all that. But, you know, there's something I learned um, that kids don't care how bad you messed up. You still my daddy. You still my, you know, parent and stuff like that. And I'm pretty sure that receiving that, that forgiveness may have been a little hard on first. And it may have been challenging. Is that is that fair to say? Well, as far as Latanya forgiving me, yes, yes. I think um, it's been a process. Mm. You know, w when we got to the point of being reconciled, I think uh, it was where do we go from here? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. here I am, there you are. What do we do from? How do we go forward? Mm -hmm. And I thank God that uh, she's always expressed to me that she was open, willing to work. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, to, to strengthen our relationship. And uh, she's never, I don't remember ever seeing any indication of, you know, I don't want this to, you know, mm -hmm. I know who you are. This is it. It was more, th let's build on, let's build on what we have. Mm -hmm. And, um, I tell you, it's been a, there's not words to, uh, <laughs> to, to, to really express uh, our relationship. It is one that um, as often as I, I have an opportunity, you know, I share with uh, people, uh, just friends, yeah. whenever we're talking about families and children and reconciliation and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Uh, I think we have one of the greatest love stories other mm -hmm. than uh, yeah. uh, uh, Christ. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and it's amazing uh, because, you know, there's something that was said that um, you guys are working on a book. Yes. Working on a book. Uh, <laughs> we'll have that for you soon. I'll make sure of it. <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have that uh, for you soon. Have the title and have the, um, have the, uh, uh, the when it's going to come out and everything for you guys soon. But um, in that, I want to shift just a little bit. Um, reconciliation is not just for fathers and daughters, but for everyone. Mm -hmm. Because the word of God says that we've been called to the ministry, ministry. Yes. Mm -hmm. of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. It's part mm -hmm. of our life. So mm -hmm. um, there are relationships that are broken that need uh, reconciliation. And, and to you guys, I'm asking this question. What do you think is the most important part to begin reconciliation? Wow. Um, just on the part of, um, of the, the child. I'm speaking from a child's perspective. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness. And when mm -hmm. I look at our story, is, is uh, the child being reconciled back to the father? I, I really think about you know the children being reconciled back to God, mm -hmm. and the fact that we're forgiven. And so, from my perspective, forgive forgiveness. So basically, the one that's been offended. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because I didn't offend him. Right. I'm the right, child. Right. Yeah. I didn't like, offend him. I'm a baby. Him. I, yeah, I I'm can't. The baby. <laughs> so yeah, be, from a child's perspective, forgiveness. Mm. Mm -hmm. So the offender. You must be able to uh, forgive the offender. Yes, because if, if, if the child doesn't forgive, then, you know, it's it's just not going to happen. Yeah. I mean, other things, but definitely it's going to start with the one that's a, that's been offended. Right. And what about the offender, <laughs> if you will, uh, well, beginning reconciliation? Um, 
I was ready to accept uh, whatever she, however she felt, mm. or whatever she needed to, to express to me, I was ready to accept that. Mm. But yet I was not, uh, at this time I'm at the point that I'm not going to let her go. Mm. I'm not going to lose her twice. So basically. And so whatever I needed to do, I was now going to pursue her rather than she pursue me. Wow. Because I needed her at this time in my life. Mm. And uh, I just, I can't thank God enough. Yeah. So, so basically, in short, you're saying, first of all, you have to accept responsibility and, conse and, the, consequences. and the consequences. Absolutely. But even after accepting the consequences, I'm not going to stop pursuing no. to be reconciled or uh, mm -hmm. to stop pursuing because I want to make this right. Absolutely. Um, I think one of the greatest offenses to children is that a parent willingly walks out of their lives. Yeah. You know, there could be circumstances that, that, that remove a parent from the child's life. But when you personally make that decision yeah. to leave, um, and it was hurting. It was a really hurtful thing for me mm -hmm. to, um, to be reconciled because I didn't know um, whether or not she would accept me. And that was really a hurting part, At, along with the things that, you know, me leaving her, you know, not knowing what she went through in early childhood, what her mom had to go through, mm -hmm. you know, and this and that. And so I was constantly bombarded with, you know, what hardships did she possibly mm -hmm. face, you know. So there was a uh, level of guilt that was there. Oh, absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Man. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. And, uh. But I thank God again and that uh, after we talked and after we met uh, and she expressed a willingness to, for us to be reconciled and to love me as her father, accept me as her father. Um, over a period of time, um, the love that she expressed toward me yeah, I can see it. I can see it all. Oh, <laughs> like my <that>. God. Um, <laughs> you know, begin to tear down the walls yeah. of guilt that I had. Oh. She. That's powerful. Love, her love, love for love me. With, yeah, yeah. Her wow. love for me uh, began to tear down those feelings of guilt. Along the, those lines, um, mm -hmm. a couple of nights ago on the conference, mm -hmm. on the conference, we talking about love. And, yes. Um, true love will cause you to look past a condition. Yes. Absolutely. And meet a need. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and she knew that there was a need there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the love that was inside of her uh, was able to meet that need. And, and sometimes that we have to look past mm -hmm. the condition of a person and mm -hmm. say, okay, what they really need right now is love yes. so they can you know, be, be strengthened and be encouraged mm -hmm. uh, during this time. Um, now I want you to do something for me. I want you to look into camera one. I want you to look into camera one. And um, I want you to encourage maybe a father. Why don't you take a couple moments? And I want you to encourage a father and, uh, that may be uh, away from their children for whatever the situation and whatever the case is. I want you to speak something into that, uh, into camera one, and encourage them uh, in that situation. What I would say to the fathers out there that are absent uh, in the life of the children, you may not realize it at this time, but your absence is going to impact their lives in a way that you will never really understand. Um, it's important that kids need both parents, if, if at all possible, and especially a man figure in the home, uh, both male and female children. Uh, men help nurture female children into their womanhood. They also help prepare their sons for their manhood. Mm. And so when this is missing out of the family unit, uh, other things try to come in and take the place of that and they don't meet the needs. Yeah. And so I would say, do all you can to be reconciled to your children. Be a father mm -hmm. to your son. Be a father to your daughter. Yeah. And uh, the rewards of being that person in their lives is just really unfathomable. Yeah. Latanya, uh, from the perspective of the child or even the um, offended one, I want you to take some time and uh, address address the uh, people, camera two, um, and let them know, you know, that there is, is reconciliation is possible. 
Um, one of the things I would just say to you, the child, um, is to forgive. Forgive, and I'm always on love, and ask the love of God to just come in your heart to forgive. And but one of the things, too, is to hear their story. Be open to hearing their story. A lot of times I've found that the things that, from a child's perspective, that we're told is not always true, and sometimes it may be true, but uh, you have to forgive and understand um, because love helps you to understand as well uh, where they're coming from, whether it's, you know, hard times, age, or just, just fear themselves. So I would definitely say to purpose to forgive and be open to hear and understand uh, their story. Wow, wow. Thank you, guys. Um, we still have a little bit of time, but I wanted to share that with you guys. Um, now, where are you guys now in the relationship? He's here. He's, He's all the way here. I'm you the love greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I see, I mean, I see the love and I see what God is doing with you guys and what God has done for you guys. And, and it, it lets others know that there is hope. Mm -hmm. There is hope. No matter how many, 22 years or yeah. 22 years. Uh, a, a difference in time that that that's amazing um so that means that for someone it may be 10 years it might be 15 years it might be uh six months i don't know what the case is but there is hope for reconciliation oh, yeah, absolutely yeah, um absolutely. so and we have to you know continue to believe god and continue to walk in love in the midst of all of that because it's important to have that very thing as for the father needs the child, the child needs the father. Um, so even even on a spiritual level, we have to understand that we we you know we back away from God, but God said, "I'm still your father." Yes, mm -hmm. I'm still your father, and and I want I want to love you, but we have to allow that love to uh, uh, to permeate and be accepted in our lives. Mm -hmm. Is that? It's true. So to, to really answer your question, we, we talk every day. Yeah. I found that we have this pretty much same sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> He's very, very witty. We share. I share with him. I talk to him. You know, it's, I can't find it. It's like, let me call my, I got to tip. Oh my gosh. I got to tip. Like, <laughs> let me call my dad. Yeah. And so, um, and so we do, we talk every day. And, uh, and so it's just a great place. We're in a good place. Good, good, good. But it took a while to get there. It took a minute, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's worth it. Amen. That's, that's 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 powerful. But I said it's worth it. Reconciliation is worth it. It heals bro. Uh, it heals wounds. It uh, it brings about healing in a person's mm -hmm. life. So reconciliation is very much so possible. But listen, I have a few seconds left, and what we're going to do on today, we're going to pray uh, that God will bring reconciliation to uh, families and uh, homes. Um, Father, we thank you for this testimony on today, and God, we thank you for what you've done in their lives and. We ask, God, that those that are in need of reconciliation, that you would bring about forgiveness, that you would bring about healing to both parties. And, Father, that you would bring about phone calls that would bring reconciliation to families on today, God. In the name of Jesus. We see it right here that it has happened. And, God, we believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. And now you guys are in the notes.